everyone and welcome. It is Wednesday, but more importantly, it is the week of a birthday of a VIP on our crew. Happy birthday, Jules. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jules. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Jules. Love it. I love Happy it. Birthday. I didn't have to give them any head start or any clue that anything was coming that was 100% spontaneous. He's finally <laughs> old enough to drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's finally too. You know, now we have to be worried about uh, her operating her lapidary equipment at the age of 21. So, um, <laughs> her, as you guys know, uh, I've spent a lot of time with Jules and her husband, Tim, in Tucson, but with Jules in particular. And uh, especially with Chris Monk, we, we, us, the three amigos go around. We've had a lot of fun and I've learned a lot from, uh, from Jules and from Chris. And uh, we, we, we all enjoy lapping and polishing stones when it's done in a non-commercial environment, relaxing with friends. It's, it's really enjoyable. Um, so we, we jokingly call uh, Jules uh, Mrs. Buttersworth because she will not stop working a piece until she is absolutely satisfied with it and it's buttery smooth. Right. So these are some of the stones that she has prepped for us and they are in our inventory, but they are beautiful. Look at this. Mm. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is... As we enjoy these meteorites, we're going to um, keep the focus on <clears throat> the, the finish that Jules did. But when you look at the, the back of the stone, the unfinished side off the, off the saw versus the finished side, you can really appreciate the stone differently. Does anyone want to comment on that or does, any, and does anyone know what this is? That looks like a U-crate. It is. And I can tell you from hours and hours and hours and weeks on a polishing machine or by hand, getting that glass finish is awesome. a challenge. So it's not even a, it's not even really about the amount of work. It's the amount of attention to detail in order to get that kind of glass finish. You've got to use magnifying glasses, find the Mac, the microscopic scratches get and and just dry it out go back and forth you have like most if you're in a production environment you're trying to get out the most stones for your time and to get that kind of glass finish you have to keep going back and forth you'll get to 600 grit and then go back to 400 grit and then get to 1200 grit and have to go back to 600 grit you just like it's it's a painstaking process and and there's no one better than Jules at it Chris, thank you very much for repeating yourself. I appreciate it. I apologize for my technical issues, but yes, definitely appreciate your input as another master finisher. Yeah, it's also super important when you're uh, looking under the microscope, when you have this level of perfect polish, the amount of detail that you can pull yes. out is just stunning. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when you're focusing on it and you can see the entire meteorite all at one time. This is just an uncle. Look, Mrs. Buttersworth. Happy birthday. <laughs> I know you don't want this to become a salesy video, Topher, but I just wanted to remind anyone viewing this, um, I'll have the um, size, the grams of each stone, and the pricing in the, uh, the video description. Thank you, babes. And these are finished on both sides as well. Yeah. Pat, what were you saying, buddy? Uh, so, you know, un under the microscope, when you have this level of polish, you can pull out detail like nothing. And the alcohol cheat e isn't even close to a proper super flat mirror polished finish. Yeah. And Zoom's not doing it 100% justice either, but yeah. No, it's coming through in pretty reasonable resolution. Good. Yeah, they look really pretty. Yeah. And these these unclassified ones are available at great prices. End cut with visible metal. I love that. Nice. Yeah. You you let me see here. 
This one is super cool because it's, uh, we put it at an H5 or an H6. So it's obviously unclassified, but you don't see a whole lot of chondrules, but you do see some, but the metal in there Yeah, each specimen shows a labor of love, the work that went into it. There's no, like you said, there's no exit wounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. On my, when my, <laughs> <laughs> and the next thing you know, your slice is ruined. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Look at that. A, a, a love cutting meat. Oh, good night, Mike. Hi, Michael. Today, buddy. Hi. Better yeah. yeah. Some interesting chondrules in these. Um, yeah, this one we love. We love our space jewels. This yep. is NWA space jewels. And look at how complex this is. Oh, okay. yeah. Now, see, especially on one that's so busy like that, you, mm -hmm. you can spend hours under the microscope with that. Yeah. Yep. That's beautiful. Uh, I got two more here. This, oh, this is a space brownie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but from edge to edge, perfection. Yeah. Love it. Doesn't that look like a brownie that just came out yeah. of the oven? <laughs> Ooh, yum. I love the edges. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then here's just another chondrite, but look at the look at the finish. Metal, metal. There. Yeah, yeah. And Jules is so talented. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, we look. I look forward to uh, sitting next to her and watching her work. Yeah. But I def wow, look at that. But I'm definitely not sitting across the field from her <laughs> while she's laughing pyramids. Because she has been known to launch them to 35 yards and have to re-hunt that meteorite. So, <laughs> Don't mess with Jules. <laughs> you could have a third eye. You know? All right, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this just brief show and telling us some meteorites that one of our friends uh, finished. And uh, they're, they're all beautiful. They're unique. And so is she. Happy birthday, Jules. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jules. Happy birthday, Jules. Thank you.